Hi everyone, it's Kathy Homeyer, and I'm so glad to see you here today again on my Nutritional Energetics show. Um, and just for a real quickie on the Nutritional Energetics side, I have my chaga here, so um, I can explain that later if we have time, or you guys can comment on chaga um, in the comments if you want later on, and I'll put that up. I am here today with Andy Lockmears, and if you guys can give me a, um, a shout in the comments, uh, that you see Andy and I okay, so that we know that we're good. <laughs> yeah, put up a hello and see who's out there. Um, yeah, Andy Lockmears. Um, I have reconnected with Andy after a after seven years of kind yes. of slowly following, right? Um, and Andy is going to tell you something a little bit different. Um, and so I'm asking you to kind of keep an open mind and connect the dots with what you do in your life now in a number of different ways. Even if you're a practitioner, there's info for you here. And if you um, just, you know, love this whole work of, of everybody and, and participate in any version of it, um, try and connect this. Keep an open mind. Try and connect it with what you um, what you see and what you do in your daily life. Um, so, Andy, I'll have you explain where you have come from and this and what we're talking about today in terms of a look at a new look at um, at uh, dis-ease, I guess. I'll let you explain it better. I'm sure you've done this a million times. Um, but you used to own a wellness center in Maine. I'll let you stay from there and say hello and where you've come from. Hi, and thanks so much, Kathy, for having me on your show today. This is really mm -hmm. fun. So yeah, I ran a wellness center. I'd been in the, the healing arts profession for, oh, you know, so many of us are in it for years, decades, really. And it really, the journey started for me in my mid-teens, so around the mid-70s. And I eventually, once my daughter was, you know, raised and out of the nest, I went back to school thinking, this is my passion. I'm going to do holistic health, did all kinds of programs and got certifications all over North America, basically. And and then opened up a wellness center in Auburn called uh, Calm HealthWorks, C-A-L-M, which are my initials, Calm HealthWorks, and had a wonderful time. Uh, met so many great people and was able to add in more modalities. I did all kinds of, you know, I had an herbal apothecary. I did hormone rejuvenation with homeopathics. I did colon hydrotherapy. I had a room people could rent and they could do all kinds of different therapies in there, like the ionic foot detox, the chi machine and things like that. So it was fun. It was a lot of work. I worked 60 or 70 hours a week. And um, so pretty soon I realized, okay, I, there needs to be something else that I do as well. Meantime, um, what I was doing was every time I would get a new client in and I didn't have answers for them, I'm like, what else can I learn so I can help this person? And so something called German New Medicine kept running across my attention span here. And I started looking at it because I was so busy and didn't have time for a lot. But I thought, well, it looks interesting. I don't understand it, but I'm going to order the book, read the book. And if it's really something I'll do, maybe at some point I'll do it. Well, I got the book in and the book, if you've ever seen it, it looks like this. And it's not something I would recommend buying, but... I read it and it made absolutely no sense. It is English, <laughs> I'm glad you but it made no sense. <laughs> yeah, so I had that book for a year and every few months I would literally pull it out and it's like, okay, I'm I'm smart. I can figure this out and I couldn't. So it's like, well, okay, it keeps coming up. I have to look at this. My always listen to my intuition, my inner guidance. So I went up to Canada and in the first 30 minutes of the first workshop, I totally understood the book. It was this key that had gone into this lock and suddenly it had was wide open. That weekend totally changed my life personally and my services as a practitioner as well. Because what I learned was absolutely out of this world. So... I'll give you a little hint of, of what German New Medicine is, if you've never heard of it. And I'm going to start with how it started, because that's really where we start with this story. So this was a, a man named Dr. Um, Reich Gerdhammer, 
and he was a regular physician, nothing different or alternative about him. He was in, he lived in Germany and he was actually in Rome, working in Rome at this time with his wife and he had a teenage, a teenage son. He had a phone call one day that his son had been shot, like in a bullet, you know. And so he, um, he and his wife rushed to his son's side and four months later, his son died in his arms. So you can imagine how devastating that would have been, especially for a physician who's used to healing people and helping people. So a short term, short time after that, Dr. Hammer was diagnosed with testicular cancer. Now he's a super smart guy and he's, he'd always been so healthy. He, he was a great big tall man and he'd always been super healthy. And he's like, Hmm, I just had this huge trauma and now I have cancer. There's got to be a correlation, right? So I know you're probably all thinking, oh, body, mind, spirit, of course. Okay, that's one thing. But he went, he, he's got a scientific mind, right? So he needed more answers. He started looking at CT scans and his own CT scan. He had a circle like a bullseye in his CT scan. It's like, what is that? He started talking with all of his patients and looking at their CT scans. Every single one of them had had some sort of trauma prior to their diagnosis. Right? So it's like, oh, that's interesting. Then he's looking at their CT scans and he's matching things up and he's realizing that everyone with the circle in the same place in the brain had experienced the same trauma prior to their diagnosis. Ha! Then he took it a step further and he realized they have the same cancer. So same conflict shock, uh, same incident that had happened to them, same location in the brain and the same cancer. There were no exceptions to this. It was 100%. He could map it out. Well, he then spent the next 35 years or so mapping out the brain. And he realized what the, yeah, he could tell just by looking at a CT scan, what kind of trauma a person had had and what their, what had gone on in their body because of that. So that's a brief overview. How are we doing so far, Kathy? Good, yeah. Good, I'm yeah, getting um, and one in particular that I just want to keep in mind as we go along is TJ is wondering uh, what a degenerative neurological disorder is indicative of. So I just want to keep that question in mind as we go along. Okay. Okay. And, and I would have to say I would, de I would need more information because that is kind of a label that, they, that the allopathy will put on something. And I look at it from a different perspective. So I would need to talk with that person and get... What does it feel like? What are the symptoms? Mm -hmm. it's, this is symptom based. Okay. So, so what we find is that modern medicine tends to put a lot of labels on different kinds of um, symptoms in the body. And what Dr. Hammer's figured out is that there's, there are a number of programs that run in the body. We call them programs. He calls them programs. And they're all very set in stone. It's like it runs the same way for everybody. We can see these programs in our cats and our dogs it's for all living beings and in humans. So that being said, um, I'll, I'll give you a little bit more info about a German new medicine then is that, so what Dr. Hammer realized is that everyone who had, you know, cancer in his clinic, at least, he worked in the cancer clinic by then, had had some trauma, and he realized it related to all symptoms in the body, and he mapped it all out. So nerves are definitely one of them, but every single part of the body, he realized it's controlled by a different area in the brain, and there's also different germ layers that are, you know all of our organs and tissues are made from, and he was able to correlate all of his work with the germ layers, and embryologists were able to confirm his work. So what he learned was that there are always two phases to every conflict shock. So we have a conflict shock. Something hits our psyche. Now, what is our psyche? It's our nervous system, it's our brain, and it's our senses, okay? So 
We're not talking body, mind, spirit here. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about something that is biological. The psyche is in the body. So something out here impacts that. It's below our level of awareness on where it impacts. What we feel is, oh, suddenly we're upset. Something said, somebody said something upsetting to us. We got a bad phone call. Somebody died or anything. You're in a bank robbery, you know, and there's a shock to the nervous system. Instantly, one of three programs begins in the body. Those three programs are cell growth, cell loss, and functional loss. Okay. So our psyche knows that to resolve that program, that conflict that is running, that we're now upset about, we need to make an area of the body stronger work with more cells or weaker with less cells. Or we need to stop the functioning of something because by doing that, by decreasing functioning, we're going to resolve that problem sooner. It's a whole different way of looking at what's going on in the body. Hopefully then soon we resolve the issue, the conflict is resolved, and maybe we've made peace with whatever it is that happened in any way that we could, right? Depends on what it was. If somebody died, it's going to not resolve in two days. It's going to take years perhaps. And other issues might take um, two seconds to resolve. It's all so different for everybody. Andy, yes. as you're talking, excuse me, as you're talking, I'm putting up little hints to people on the screen that they can see so that while you're talking, I'm hopefully putting in the wisdom that I know about this and following along. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. And yeah, you've got stories as well. Everybody has their GNM stories once you once you understand how these programs are running in your body. So it's fascinating. That's great. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um so yeah, hopefully you resolve the pro the the conflict, and once you do, your nervous system then switches into what we call the healing phase. So if you had cell growth during the first phase, you're now going to break those extra cells down because you don't need them anymore. If you had cell loss when you were upset, now we're going to replenish those cells. And if you had a loss of functioning, now you're going to regain functioning in a perfect world, right? So. Once you're through that, you go through a what we call an epi crisis. After that, you know you you you, re, you return to your normal day night cycle. Your circadian rhythm um, goes back to normal, if you will. As we know, life doesn't always work like that. Let's say you know you had a somebody who was close to you who died, and a month later somebody else died, or a year later somebody else died, and so we have yet another impact. So sometimes we can have, you know, impact after impact kind of building up in the uh, in the body and things aren't resolved. And then the body starts doing running these programs and kind of making changes in the body that are not super comfortable. So when I work with somebody who has something that's chronic or reoccurring, we have to sort of do some digging. What was the original conflict and what are the conflicts since then that are kind of layered in there? And we have to unravel that. So we, when we have something like a degenerative nerve disease, we have to look at a bigger picture. It's perhaps more than just one thing going on. So it's it's amazing work. It's it's detective work. I always you know put on the Sherlock Holmes hat and get out your magnifying glass. We need to start looking. Mm -hmm. Okay. So somebody's asking, do we uh, re do we do the resolution subconsciously? Oftentimes, absolutely, because, yeah. Um, so let's say, for example, I, I love this example because we all have had this, all right? You've all had a common cold, right? You're sneezing, you're gunky, you know, you don't feel so good, you've got pressure in your head, and all of that feeling that you have. Maybe you've got a little fever as well, like flu-like stuff. I think everybody can result, can, um, re, um, We've all felt that, right? Yeah. So when you have that, it means you've already resolved the program. You didn't even know that you resolved it, but you did. Healing, uh, fi um, sorry, symptoms take place in the healing phase. So after the resolution is when your body is going to now return to homeostasis. And to do that, there's pain, swelling, and inflammation. 
to break down those cells that grow, to patch in the holes that we have. We all feel that and it's called being sick, but that is the healing phase. Once you feel that, you know you've resolved it. So if you've had that common cold, which is a stink conflict, oh, this is lousy, this, is, this stinks, I'm fed up with this. That's what starts that program. By the time you have symptoms, you've already resolved that without even realizing you had to. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, I used to hate that when they called that that, but that's really, you know, what it is. Hey, this really, this really stinks. This, and we all have those. We all get runny noses. I was telling you about a person that um, I was working with that um, she's, she's had a runny nose for 25 years. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, so that's a continuation of the cycle, right? Right. It is. So she's getting conflict relapses. She's getting, you know, somehow her psyche is getting hit with something that, that stinks over and over again. And the cycle just can't finish. And so the work is to figure out what is it on a daily basis that's keeping this program active. And it's usually for something like that, it's pretty easy to tune into. Mm hmm. Yeah, something like that that's been hanging on for so long may be easy to key in on with just a few basic questions and, like you said, detective work on what to do. And then we also, with the symptoms, we also try and um, to lessen the symptoms. Once This is really kind of identifying where you are, um, what's going on, what you're feeling as you go through your day, what is shocking you, if you the, without even knowing it, and you then... They're you because it's really you can't really detect, you know, a shock to the nervous system unless it's really big, you know, a huge shock. You feel like time is standing still. That's not daily life for us. That's, mm -hmm. you know, once or twice in a lifetime type thing. This is just a daily thing that impacts you, that little two second thing that irks you and then you're on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. But it's keeping that program active. Mm -hmm. OK. Um... See if there's any other particular question. Somebody asked if we were going to take questions. If you want to put them into the chat box, I'll try and relay those. Um, so there's uh, different programs that you can identify with different symptoms. They relate to, to um, and I'm going to say this wrong, so I want you to correct me, the same parts of the brain, organ, and I guess thought pattern or psyche. And they, they, cor they correlate in three different places at once when you get a shock, right? Right, right. And it's psyche, brain, and organ all at once. They're, they're all the same thing, mm -hmm. even though we think of them as different, but they're all one unit. They act all together. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, do you want to give us an example of a program or parts of, so they get the idea of how this works? Um, yeah, like this, the stink conflict I just mentioned, that would be something everybody can identify with. Mm -hmm. uh, what would be another good one, Kathy? Um, what would folks like to? Um, um, a, 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 um, well, I, I guess, guess this is a really involved one, but chronic fatigue and hanging, what what German New Medicine would call hanging healings, maybe a clue into those. Right. So, so those are the most complex types of things happening. So I'm going to start with an easier one, and then we'll go to that one just so that they get a basis. So let's say hypothyroidism, because that is, you know, uh, an epidemic in our country at this point, right? A lot of people are diagnosed, oh, my thyroid, hypothyroidism. So it, it's, you know, allopathy will say it's under functioning. Well, the conflict that goes with that is not being fast enough to catch a morsel. Well, what the heck does that mean, right? <laughs> and basically what we see, what I see a lot of is it's the soccer mom. It's that person who's, oh, I gotta be there. Oh, I gotta go do this. I gotta get this. I gotta get dinner on the table. I gotta do this. Now I've gotta do this. And we're going in so many different directions. We're never, we never catch up, you know, and just relax. We're just always in that mode of going, going, going. It's this for per proverbial soccer mom. And that's what hypothyroidism, it's that program that starts. So when you get to a diagnosis of hypothyroidism, it is in a hanging healing, generally. It's been going on for, oh, I've been feeling like this for three years or something. Um, what we want to do is try to catch it, nip it in the bud right away so that it doesn't go into a long, what we call a hanging healing, a healing phase that never finishes. 
that brings us to something like um, chronic fatigue. So if you've got like a fibromyalgia type thing, you know, it's, it's a self devaluation. So somehow you're feeling less than, and it's now become kind of part of who you are, especially if you've had chronic fatigue for two years, it's now a part of your life. And it's about unraveling every part of your day that keeps you active in a self devaluation. Mm -hmm. I've got a few questions in here um, that can relate to, to folks here. So maybe we can take a look at those too. Um, Lori says, I've been sick for over a week going to the hospital today. Um, I, I think it's thing. Think I have a lung infection. What should I tell my brain? <laughs> well, what are the symptoms? Um, we'll let her add those in there. And then yeah. um, Angelica says, so how to relate to cold symptoms of a recent shock, please? How to release, uh, so. How so to relate to, I think it's how should I relate to cold symptoms of a recent shock or maybe she has them, not sure either. Are we talking about feeling cold or having a cold? Uh, relate to cold symptoms. I'm, okay, I, so having a cold. I think so. If they're, if it's nasal, then usually that's what we would call a, a common cold and that's a stink conflict. So that means something's lousy, I'm fed up with this. It's something that irks you. And maybe you've been mulling it over for a few days or maybe in, you have to look and see when did your symptoms start because the conflict was before that, it was prior to that. So we always develop the timeline. Okay, and um, TJ had offered some more information. I'm gonna see if I can find that. Um, Spinocellabellar ataxia and balance issues, memory, gait, muscle de degeneration. Okay, that's that I would need a lot more information on. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And yeah, I would I would yeah recommend you um, uh, you know contact Andy. I've got her website there. You can see how she looks at those. Uh, Lori says she has fever, cough, nose, lungs, hard to breathe. That was the uh, been sick for a week, going to the hospital today. Thinks she has a lung infection. Hard to breathe as well. Um, yep, it's hard to breathe. Okay. Fever, cough. Now, fever generally, um, like I said, it's really hard to gather a lot of information. Um, you know, we're going back and forth through a chat box because um, Andy isn't seeing the chat box, so I'm relaying. Um, but yeah, she said she's yeah. uh, think she has a lung infection. Uh, going to the hospital today, sick for over a week. Fever, cough, nose, lungs, hard to breathe. Well, it's it's probably more bronchial would be my guess you know that's what it's bronchial you know like when it turns to bronchitis ask her if it seems to be like some sort of a bronchitis like in the bronchial tubes okay um, and i really don't want to do diagnosis on here because that's yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but, but the, yes so the so we'll go back to then the the you can right. when you have enough information you can relate it to a program that is running or has resolved and you're seeing those symptoms the symptoms as the result would that be correct right exactly and so what they're asking me I need more information so I often need to know what is their laterality are they right or left handed dominant mm -hmm. I also need to know their hormone status um, their gender. So there's a lot of factors that it's mm -hmm. that come into play because if you're right-handed versus left-handed, that changes the picture a little bit. Mm -hmm. If you're premenopausal or postmenopausal, that changes the picture as well. Right. Yeah. So there's there's layers upon layers of stuff of information. Mm -hmm. Now somebody okay. says um, is talking about being overweight. So I was doing my homework last night. So I want to only um, only start to approach this question and see if I'm, if this is right, Andy. Um, I was reading about um, the, and, and everybody can relate to us going into fear and being in an issue. And um, I was reading about the kidney tools. I'm in mean, energy medicine and Chinese energy. It says kidney is fear related. So I'm going to just going to say this really shortly and wait, wait to, um, yeah, way too undetailed. But um, part of going into a, a fear reaction would start this kidney program. 
And um, again, without all the details, and then we could uh, retain water, which a lot of that would be weight. So sometimes we gain weight because we are gaining a lot of this water and this isn't resolving. No, absolutely. There's, oh, yeah, yeah, the two weight programs. <laughs> one of them is actual fat cells. The other one is a water weight. So, and you've hit on the water weight. Absolutely. Especially when there's, uh, when somebody gains weight quickly, it's usually water weight. Mm -hmm. And that, that could be, yeah, related to um, a, a fear program that's running and doing its thing to actually help you. Yeah, Chinese medicine would find. <laughs> Um, German new medicine would say it's an abandonment or existence conflict. Mm -hmm. So it's yep. not really emotion based, whereas fear is an emotion. This is abandonment and existence, which mm -hmm. isn't really an emotion. It's a it's a, a state of being. Mm -hmm. if you will. Yep. Yeah. Um, there's yeah. Maybe fear in there. Somebody else is saying lungs related to grief. I mean, you know, in in uh, a lot of those we relate the kind of emotions to. Right. Um, an organ, this kind of relates the organ to more of the program, I guess I want to say. And this is why it's not body, mind, spirit. I always say that German new medicine is beyond body, mind, the body, mind connection because you can have many, many emotions. They don't cause dis ease. All right. A program starts one of you might have a thousand different emotions. Not one of them starts the program. What starts the program is the shock to the psyche, not the emotion. Okay, so um, so I'll say lungs. The lung program is a, a death fright conflict. So we're afraid of death. So somebody just died. They think they're going to die, which is different than the bronchial program. So each organ often has uh, different, depending on the part of the organ we're talking about, it will have different conflicts. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like the kidneys have three different conflicts. We have to key in in a session. I would key in, well, which part of your kidney is having, you know, the issue? Mm -hmm. And then we know the conflict. Right. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm going to say for, for those of you who are practitioners um, and for those of you who aren't, Andy has two different courses that, um, as a testimony as well, are just awesome. Um, I, like I said, I knew about this stuff seven years ago, but with like Andy, when I first thought, I was like, oh, this is just too much. I can't get through this. When you finally start to get into it, it does. I never thought I would say this. It does simplify itself just a little bit so you can start to follow through. Um, Andy is running uh, or has on some ongoing classes for practitioners so you can meld this to what you do you can understand some of this and learn to meld it with what you do now um, she also has a basically i'll call it the beginners course so that you can relate some of the principles to what's going on in your life now your family life now and just on a day-to-day -day basis identify some of this um, amazing stuff that literally can be shown in cat scans um, on a one-to-one -one basis with your organ. So, yeah. Right. And let me say, we don't have to have a CT scan to figure this out. We can do it just by symptoms. Right, thank you. And I also want to mention that something you just said, Kathy, for practitioners, German New Medicine fits with every single modality out there, which is the beauty of it. So I, my passion right now is really trying to reach the practitioners mm -hmm. and regular people as well, non-practitioners, but mm -hmm. yeah, it fits yeah. with everything, which is yeah. awesome. Yeah, so for all of you um, who've been writing in the chat box, um, um, uh, like I said, it's really, you know, it's hard to tell just from these particular things, but know that with a little bit more information, you can have information that you wouldn't believe you had all, um, or, or it's about time, but I'm going to share, um, something that Andy told me that I have been chasing my, um, uh, my oral, my, my teeth. I mean, I mean, I have a lot of, I have had them, I've had cavities from day one. My mother was, God bless her, uh, took me to the dentist every six months. I got so much metal in my mouth. Um, she took me every time and, you know, for, for some reason, I had cavities every single time. And I was taking care of my teeth 
And even now to this day, I have followed every high level energy medicine oral care that I could possibly find. Um, I have to say when I've started doing more of the energetic work, my metals started falling out, which was interesting. And you know, where it went, I'm not sure. And I still have some, but I haven't, I've gotten root canals before I knew a whole lot of information. So I stopped getting the root canals and, you know, my whole oral area is totally compromised. I even had braces. So um, the, the base, and I'll just go through it really quickly. So the base program with, uh, I'll just say tooth decay. And again, don't take every, uh, though, for those listening, don't take all of this extremely fact because I'm just giving you a very, very short, short version. But it's a bite conflict or you feel you can't bite back or, um, and we'll leave it at that. So, um I have somebody dear to me that uh, listens to me in the end, but does not listen to me up front and always kind of has to take over the conversation. So again, short story is that Andy said, okay. Uh, Cause I said, well, you know, I, I know it's a bite conflict. I have, sometimes I get gum so I can, she goes, no, nope, get an apple. And when you're talking to this person, start biting on the apple. And I thought, well, okay. And oddly enough, a bag of apples showed up at my doorstep by this person who it had no clue what Andy and I had been talking about. So I said, well, there's my clue. So next day we were having a meeting and I was, while he was talking, and even though I was supposed to be running the show, um, he started talking and, and kind of go, well, but you've got to do this. And I'm like, oh, biting on my apple like crazy. And I now am aware of kind of the symptoms and the reaction and even um, even the part of the healing that I'm supposed to do. So I'm not setting off that program or resolving the program. Again, I'm saying this very, very quickly, but um, you can see how you can very practically get this done. And then, you know, within any of you practitioners who do any energy medicine, you can weave this into that and kind of um, assist with symptoms or help people find their resolve in a number of different ways. So I just wanted to put that out there very quickly. So, so Andy, yeah, I've got you. We've, um, we're, um, we've, we've done our time, um, but here's Andy's um, uh, information. It's biohealthworksinstitute.com. And if you have any questions, I would recommend, uh, you know, going to Andy's website, taking a look at her programs. Um, and I, I appreciate the comments in here. Um, it's really interesting stuff and 30 minutes doesn't even do it close to justice. So if okay. it resonates, yeah, if it resonates with you at all, whether a practitioner or, you know, person who just is looking for answers with issues, I would definitely recommend Andy's programs. They're awesome. She gives you one-to-one -one assistance, um, goes through the material so you can try and sift it out in your, in your brain. Um, no pun intended. Well, I guess every pun intended. Um, <laughs> and then you can pull it into whatever it is that you've learned to do to your do for yourself. So, yeah, Andy, thank you so much. You're very welcome. My pleasure. Okay, and we'll see you again. Hopefully, we can have you on again sometime. That would be, awesome. be fun. Yeah. Okay. okay, everybody. Thanks for joining in. Appreciate the comments, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. Bye bye. Right, bye bye.